These massive meteors are earth-shattering, literally. Number 10, Kamchatka Superbolide. This was the most recent major meteor that struck the Earth, observed in the North Pacific Ocean. It's the third largest meteor collision recorded since 1900. On December 18, 2018, a meteor exploded in a massive burst in the air off the coast of the Kamchatka Peninsula in far eastern Russia. The Japanese Meteorological Agency caught footage of the dust trail of the massive space rock as it slammed into the atmosphere at a speed of 72,000 miles per hour. It had the energy of 10 atomic bombs and shattered at an altitude of 80,000 feet. The estimate of the size of this beast? 10 to 15 meters, or 30 to 50 feet in diameter. Meteors like this only come around every 20 years or so on average, but we are tracking over 750,000 objects of similar size as they race around the solar system. Number 9. Tunguska Event In the morning of June 30th, 1908, deep in the heart of Siberia, in a remote and isolated part of Russia, a strange and terrifying explosion struck the sky with the force of a nuclear bomb. But this was no bomb. It was a mysterious and powerful impact event. There were so few people living in this untouched wilderness of backcountry Russia at the time that few detailed reports of the event even exist. But the ones that we do have tell an incredible story. At 7 a.m. local time, northwest of Lake Baikal, natives and settlers saw a streak of blue light as bright as the sun speed across the sky. A few minutes later, a massive flash and a bang shocked the area. A shockwave followed, breaking windows on houses, knocking people to the ground, and felling millions of trees. The few eyewitness reports that do exist describe an incredible heat, a strong wind, tree branches catching fire, panicking villagers, and an earthquake. Observers as far away as Sweden saw glowing lights in the night sky, which scientists later explained were caused by frozen particles in the upper atmosphere reflecting light from the sun over thousands of miles. Even in California, on the other side of the world, scientists found an increase in dust particles all over the world for months because of this event. And in Tunguska, there wasn't even an impact crater. This space rock did not even make it all the way to Earth's surface before breaking up into tiny pieces. Imagine if it had been slightly bigger, or if the meteor had come in at a steeper angle and not broken up in the atmosphere. Number 8. Manicouagan Lake This one is almost too perfect to be true. There is a lake in central Quebec in Canada with a massive 750 square mile footprint. It's a nearly perfect circle with a nearly perfect circular island in the middle. How did this happen? Over 200 million years ago, a massive meteorite slammed into the ground at a speed of over 3,000 miles per hour. It was three miles wide and caused the fifth most powerful impact the world has ever seen. The central island was created by a unique effect of the impact that threw up a mound of earth in the middle of the crater. Over the next several million years, the space around the central mound filled with water. There were two separate lakes that bordered this clod of earth, Manicouagan and Musha Lagain. In 1970, the Canadian government connected the two lakes to create one ring lake by using a dam, the Daniel Johnson Dam, to flood the area and create the Manicouagan Reservoir. They also created the island in the middle by ringing it in with water completely. It was named the René Levasseur Island. Manicouagan Lake is known as an annular lake because it's shaped like a ring. It's the biggest annular lake in the world. Nowadays, the whole island is a natural reserve and is protected from development or logging. Together with the surrounding lake, the area is known as the Eye of Quebec a truly unique geological feature worth checking out. Number 7. Chelyabinsk Meteor This monster was the second largest asteroid to strike our planet since 1900, after Tunguska, of course. 
in 2013, clocking in with a speed of over 40,000 miles per hour, this 20 meter wide asteroid burst into a brilliant light over the southern Ural Mountains, over the Russian Chelyabinsk Oblast. The meteor had the energy of 30 atomic bombs at a massive 500 kilotons of TNT. Many eyewitnesses experienced intense heat from the fireball and 1,500 residents checked into hospitals for injuries. No deaths were caused by this fast-moving bullet from the heavens, though. The injuries were mostly from shattered glass, from windows that were broken by the shockwave that accompanied the strike. Why was it not detected? Well, this meteor was actually too small and was approaching the planet from the sun's side. It is much more difficult for our sensitive telescopes to find objects coming at us when the sun is behind them. Think of it as the sun being in our eyes. Thankfully, no deaths occurred, but folks suffered intense sunburns from the powerful explosion, as well as cuts from glass. Over 7,200 buildings were damaged, and the total cost was over $30 million. If the object had approached the Earth at a steeper angle, though, it could have done far more damage, as it might have pushed through our atmosphere and struck the ground before exploding, rather than breaking up in the sky. That would have been absolutely devastating. One question, though. Why does Russia seem to attract these meteors so frequently? All three major meteors that have hit the Earth since 1900 exploded over Russia. Strange. Number six, Chesapeake Bay impact. Famous for its crabs nowadays, the Chesapeake Bay was formed by a massive super bolide that slammed into the Earth about 35 million years ago. The crater it formed is one of the best preserved wet target impact craters on Earth because it's submerged within the brackish water at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. The space rock dove in at over 100,000 miles per hour and directly hit the water, pummeling it and crushing a path deep into the rock below. The surrounding area, which is now Maryland and Virginia, was actually a tropical rainforest at the time. But that quickly turned into a hellscape of flying debris, rock, boiling water, a mega tsunami that went 100 miles inland, and an atmosphere filled with choking dust. The sloping crater now extends 50 miles in diameter and is about 1.3 miles deep, all under the water near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge between the Eastern Shore and Virginia Beach. The sediments that sank into the crater caused the formation of the Chesapeake Bay today and also put the groundwater in the area at risk of contamination with salt water. Why? There is water over 100 million years old trapped under layers of sediment at the bottom of that crater. It can leak into groundwater which is a risk to all present-day residents of the area. Number five, Popeye Crater. This crater, also called an astrobleem, is tied with Manicouagan for the fourth largest known impact crater on planet Earth. Just like the Chesapeake Bay impact crater, Popeye occurred about 35 million years ago during the Eocene Epoch. When was it discovered? It had been known for decades, at least since the 1970s, but a full-scale expedition and excavation took place in 1997, which found millions of diamonds buried in the dirt surrounding the crash site. What happened? The intense pressure from the impact squeezed the graphite in the earth into diamonds for miles around. They are tiny, but they are natural diamonds. They haven't been mined because they are too expensive to get to and not worth a whole lot. Most diamonds nowadays are produced in a lab, and Popeye Crater is far out of the way. How remote is it? It's 190 miles east of the remote Siberian village of Katanga, and a full 550 miles northeast of the city of Norilsk. And Norilsk, the closest big city, is itself one of the most remote, desolate, frozen wasteland cities in the world. Norilsk is known for intense pollution and long, bitter winters, and Popigai is further north, almost at the Arctic coast of Russia. So it sits there near the top of the world, a bump in the surface encrusted with diamonds from millions of years ago. Number four, 
Sudbury Crater. This is also called the Sudbury Basin or the Sudbury Nickel Eruptive. What is it? A giant and ancient impact formation near the coast of Lake Superior in Ontario in Canada. This is one of the oldest known impact craters at over 1.8 billion years. That means it took place back when the Earth was a very different place, covered in shallow seas, teeming with simple forms of plant life. The rock that struck was likely up to nine miles in diameter, way bigger than any of the previous meteors on this list. It threw debris up for hundreds of miles in all directions and blanketed the atmosphere with dust and grit. It shifted the climate of the planet for many years, but now just forms a smooth valley within the Canadian Shield. It's 40 miles long, 20 miles wide, and 10 miles deep, though all the erosion and settling of sediment over billions of years filled it in so that the valley is nowhere near that steep. Nowadays, there is a large amount of mining that goes on within the valley as deposits of valuable metals gathered in the pit formed by this impact. Nickel and copper are two of the major raw material exports of the area. Number three, Vredefort Impact. Now this is the second biggest crater on planet Earth, at least that we know about. It's located in the heart of South Africa, near the town of Vredefort. It's even older than Sudbury, at over 2 billion years of age. The crater is a full 190 miles across, and the meteor that formed it was 9 miles in diameter. It's created a rare multi-ring impact crater, which is unusual here, but common on other planets and moons in our solar system. The crater here, though, is large enough to fit four towns in the center, which is plenty for tourists and agriculture. They are scattered across a dome of raised rock in the center of the crater, which is from the rebound from the impact when rocks literally bounced back from being crushed together under the superbolide meteor. A stunning view awaits you if you choose to explore this awesome natural geologic formation. Number two, Chicxulub asteroid. Now this is the famous one. Chicxulub killed the dinosaurs. Approximately 66 million years ago, one hot morning in the late Cretaceous period, a Tyrannosaurus rex looked up from his breakfast and saw something strange in the sky. Before his little reptile brain could react, a massive rock flew down from outer space and smashed into the Gulf of Mexico near the present-day Yucatan Peninsula and absolutely obliterated the order of life on the planet. 75% of species went extinct in a geologic instant. How do we know this? Scientists working in the late 1970s found evidence of the crater under the waters of the Gulf by using magnetic imaging to look for places to drill for oil. What they found was evidence of a 100 mile wide gap in the seafloor, a massive crater that looked like a magnetic bullseye. After drilling for rock samples and many years of experimentation and observation, researchers declared that the meteor that hit was up to 50 miles wide and contained the energy of nearly one trillion atomic bombs. Of course, the mega tsunami was over 300 feet tall and sped across the ocean around the world in all directions until it struck land. There were likely earthquakes and volcanic eruptions around the world. Boiling hot rain mixed with scalding gravel and balls of fire poured down from the sky, killing every living thing within a thousand miles. The dust thrown up into the atmosphere blocked out the sun, causing a dramatic drop in global temperature for years and killing countless plant species in the process. Who first came up with the theory that it was this impact that killed off the dinosaurs and ended the 190 million year Mesozoic era? a father and son duo, Luis and Walter Alvarez of UC Berkeley. Bravo, gentlemen. You figured out what ended the dinosaurs and set up the planet for a new apex species millions of years later, Homo sapiens. We've seen nine impressive collections of space rocks with Earth, but this last one is the biggest and oldest of them all. 
But first, if you like this channel, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And speak up in the comments. Do you think we're due for a major meteor to strike? Should we be more focused on protecting ourselves from a giant 10 mile wide invader from outer space? Number one, moon creation impact. The theory that follows is unproven, but it is the leading candidate for the creation of Earth's moon. The big splash or Theia impact hypothesis states that the moon formed from the rocks that were thrown up into the Earth's orbit due to the largest collision in our planet's history with another planet-sized rock at least as big as Mars. Now, if something that big hit Earth today, it would be game over. Humanity would cease to exist in the blink of an eye. Imagine a trillion atomic bombs going off all at the same time, all over a full quarter of the Earth's surface. Thankfully, this once in a planetary lifetime event happened 4.5 billion years ago, when the Earth was still very young and without any life at all. The direct hit between young Earth and a planetoid likely mashed both objects together and tossed up so much debris into orbit that over the next billion or so years, gravity brought the dust and rocks together into something called an accretion disk, something like the rings of Saturn, and collapsed them into a single sphere that now swings around us every day. The evidence for this impact theory is in the ratio of different rare elements within the surface of the Earth and the surface of the Moon. It makes sense too. Massive colliding space rocks, throwing up huge belts of rubble and gravel, eventually settling down into the relatively calm patch of space that we currently call home. The early history of our solar system really is mysterious and fascinating, and well worth researching further.